Hello, my name is Shweta Bhatt and I'm Assistant Professor in the Department of Radiology at University of Rochester. I will be talking uh, on sonography of right upper quadrant emergencies. This talk has been prepared jointly by myself and Dr. Vikram Dogra and I'll be presenting this talk. Sonography of right upper quadrant emergencies. Every time we talk about right upper quadrants, the first thing that comes to our mind is gallbladder. And that is why most of the entities that I'm going to be talking about in this talk today is going to be related to the gallbladder. Some of the other uh, rarer and uncommon entities will include that of the liver and other organs in the right upper quadrant, including the kidney. This is the first case of a 25-year-old female who presented with acute onset right upper quadrant pain. The three sonographic pictures presented here demonstrate a very classical picture of what we call acute cholecystitis. It demonstrates a distended gallbladder, some gallstones and gall sludge, a very thickened gallbladder wall, some pericholecystic fluid. And what we are not able to demonstrate here but is extremely important in making the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis is that of sonographic Murphy's sign. Sonographic Murphy's sign is defined as the presence of maximal tenderness elicited by direct pressure of the transducer over a sonographically localized gallbladder. Now, Murphy's sign can be demonstrated by physical exam also, but ultrasound helps you to identify the position of the gallbladder and helps us to elicit the tenderness right over the gallbladder and thus specify uh, the etiology to the gallbladder itself. The reported prevalence of sonographic Murphy's sign is more than 95% in patients with acute cholecystitis, and that is why it makes it the most specific sign in making the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis. However, the problem that we most often uh, incur is uh, that most of these patients who come from the ED to the radiology suite are already medicated, and so uh, the sign is not uh, extremely useful uh, because uh, they do not uh, have any tenderness. So uh, we have to rely on the other sonographic signs to make the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis. The physiology behind sonographic Murphy's sign is that the gallbladder distension and the inflammation, it stimulates the visceral afferent nerves in the muscular and serosal layers of the gallbladder via the autonomic nervous system, thus creating the tenderness right over the gallbladder. Uh, in today's world, CAT scan plays an important role in uh, any patient who walks into the ED with uh, abdominal pain. And um, most of these cases who do not have a primary diagnosis of a gallbladder disease may get a CAT scan first before an ultrasound. Uh, these two CT pictures actually demonstrate a very classical picture of what is uh, called an acute cholecystitis. You see a very enhancing, thickened gallbladder wall, you see some gallstones, and a pericholecystic fluid and gallbladder wall edema, which are very classical of acute cholecystitis. So patients usually present with fever, pain, elevated white count. The ultrasound criteria, as I already talked about, uh, includes uh, some very specific signs and some other useful signs. And a combination of all these signs helps us to make the diagnosis. Sonographic Murphy's sign being the most specific, uh, is uh, demonstrated by uh, eliciting maximum tenderness over the sonographically localized gallbladder. Other findings include scolelithiasis, uh, impacted stone in the neck of the gallbladder or the cystic duct. Uh, there should be a gallbladder wall thickening greater than 3 mm. However, uh, you have to demonstrate that the gallbladder is optimally distended. So the gallbladder, which is less than 2 cm wide, may have thick walls just because of suboptimal distension and may represent a non-fasting state so the gallbladder wall thickness will not hold true in such cases. Nuclear scan, including the HIDA scan, should be reserved only for equivocal cases on ultrasound. Moving on to the second case. This is a 54-year-old female with right upper quadrant pain, and uh, this is a single uh, ultrasound picture of the right upper quadrant, which demonstrates a contracted gallbladder with some echogenic area within the gallbladder lumen, and uh, some posterior reverberation artifact and some posterior acoustic shadowing. Now this is a difficult diagnosis to make just on the basis of ultrasound because what you're not able to determine here is whether that echogenic focus is calcium or whether it is air. So CT 
becomes our friend here. And it's, as you can see uh, in the CT picture of the right upper quadrant, demonstrates a uh, partially distended gallbladder with a huge gallstone and some air in the gallbladder wall and gall, uh, gallbladder lumen, as demonstrated here. So you can correlate the ultrasound picture with the given CT and uh, assume that uh, the psychogenic focus, which was seen in the gallbladder lumen, uh, was probably the air and the posterior uh, reverberation artifact was coming from the air and not from the calcium uh, uh, represented by the stone. So the diagnosis here is that of an emphysematous cholecystitis. Yet another example, uh, a better example of uh, ultrasound images of emphysematous cholecystitis, uh, which demonstrates a very inflamed gallbladder once again. This is the transverse image and the sagittal image. Uh, demonstrates a distended gallbladder, some dependent echogenic foci with posterior acoustic shadowing, which represent gallstones, and some non-dependent echogenic foci, uh, more uh, anteriorly in the non-dependent position as demonstrated here and here in the sagittal image with some posterior reverberation artifact, which suggests presence of air. Yet another example of uh, emphysematous cholecystitis, a distended inflamed appearing gallbladder with some dependent echogenic foci representing gallstones and non-dependent echogenic foci, which rise and uh, demonstrate air. Emphysematous cholecystitis is a rare entity. It it's about 1% of the, uh, all cases of acute cholecystitis. The main risk factors are that of elderly males with diabetes mellitus. There is vascular compromise of the gallbladder wall, which leads to infection by the gas-forming organisms, mainly the Clostridium and E. coli. The ultrasound findings, as I already showed in my cases, uh, consist of curvilinear echogenic areas in the gallbladder wall with reverberation artifact. The obscuration of the gallbladder by the high-level echoes should also raise a suspicion for presence of air within the gallbladder. The differential diagnosis includes porcelain gallbladder, uh, which uh, is calcification in the gallbladder wall. However, the posterior acoustic shadowing will be more discreet and more sharp compared to the reverberation artifact. And CT, of course, is more sensitive and uh, helps us to make the diagnosis with ease compared to the ultrasound. Moving on to the next case. This is a 54-year-old male who presented with elevated liver function tests. What we are seeing in these two images uh, of the gallbladder is this uh, avascular area uh, within the gallbladder lumen, which some people may call sludge. But the interesting thing to note here is that the gallbladder wall is not very well defined. And the sludge happens to uh, layer more dependently, which is not happening in this case. And this actually was transmural hemorrhagic necrosis involving the gallbladder wall. Uh, these are the two uh, CT image and the nuclear medicine image, which uh, just demonstrates uh, findings of an inflamed gallbladder and is nonspecific in further uh, making the diagnosis, which was gangrenous cholecystitis in this case and was uh, proven surgically. Gangrenous cholecystitis uh, demonstrates is uh, transmural necrosis. Uh, which produces the inflammation of the adjacent parietal peritoneum, producing generalized right upper quadrant pain. Ultrasound demonstrates, again, findings uh, suggestive of inflamed gallbladder, but without sonographic Murphy sign. This gangrenous cholecystitis has a very high mortality rate of up to 22% and a complication rate of 16 to 25%, which needs early diagnosis and therefore surgery. According to Fagani et al. in his paper, the only statistically significant predictors of gangrenous change in the gallbladder in the setting of acute cholecystitis were a history of diabetes mellitus and a white count greater than 15,000. According to TFL et al., a specific sign supporting the diagnosis of gangrenous cholecystitis is that of gallbladder wall striation or the presence of alternating mural hyperechoic and hyperechoic linear areas, which can be seen in about 40% of patients. This is a classical picture of a HIDA scan in a case of gangrenous cholecystitis in a different patient, which is called the RIM sign, which is seen uh, here with increased uptake in the liver parenchyma adjacent to the gallbladder without any activity in the gallbladder. Moving on to the next case and in the series of cholecystitis, this is a 55-year-old year female with right upper quadrant pain. This is a single sonographic picture of the gallbladder, which again, everyone would agree, is that of an inflamed gallbladder, very thick-walled gallbladder wall, and some pericholecystic fluid as well. 
However, what is lacking here is the presence of gallstones. And therefore, the diagnosis here is that of an acalculus cholecystitis. This is also an extremely rare condition, accounting for only 5 to 10 percent of cases of acute cholecystitis. There are several etiological or predisposing risk factors, which include trauma, mechanical ventilation, hyperalimentation, etc. The patient is usually very sick, and uh, an outpatient uh, uh, walking into the radiology suite with right upper quadrant pain usually does not have a calculus cholecystitis. The patient has to be uh, usually sick with all these predisposing risk factors that I just talked about. The cause usually is related to functional obstruction of the cystic duct by viscous bile. Moving on to the next case, uh, it's a 56-year-old female with, again, presenting with right upper quadrant pain and fever and have shown some sequential ultrasound images from August and then October. The, the first image is that from August of 2008, which demonstrates uh, a, a distended gallbladder with multiple gallstones. It, the gallbladder looked pretty unremarkable otherwise without any, in, without any, in, any evidence of inflammation. However, the two sonographic images taken after two months demonstrate a very ugly looking gallbladder with ill-defined gallbladder wall and a very uh, echogenic, mass-like, sludge-like presence within the gallbladder lumen. Here are the CT and MRI images from the same patient, which demonstrate a very distended gallbladder with a very irregular inflamed gallbladder wall and some nodularities, as you can see here. The MRI findings uh, correlate with the CT findings and the ultrasound findings. This was confirmed on uh, surgery and pathology as xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis. Um, this is a very difficult diagnosis to make on radiology and is usually a pathological diagnosis. It's an uncommon variant of chronic cholecystitis and extremely rare, incidence of about less than 1%. It is characterized by the presence of grayish yellow nodules or streaks in the gallbladder wall, which are caused by lipid laden macrophages, similar to xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis. The radiologic findings, as I said, are very nonspecific. Um, they consist of wall thickening, presence of gallstones, and uh, the radiological diagnosis is usually very difficult. The presence of cholelithiasis or biliary obstructin is seen in almost all the cases. The most characteristic radiologic findings in this disease are that of hypoechoic nodules and bands, as we saw in retrospect on the CT. Just to show a comparative image of another entity, uh, which also can demonstrate very thickened gallbladder wall and appearance similar to an inflamed gallbladder. As you can see here in these two images of the gallbladder, we demonstrate a markedly thickened gallbladder wall with some pericholecystic fluid. However, the patient was totally asymptomatic and was being, sc was being scanned to look at her kidneys. And on further delving into the history, we found that the patient did have history of AIDS and a diagnosis of AIDS cholangiopathy was therefore forwarded. To complete the series of cholecystitis, uh, there are three other conditions which need uh, to be mentioned here, although I do not have any images to support it. Uh, suppurative cholecystitis, also called gallbladder empyema, is a complication of acute cholecystitis, which results when purulent material or pus fills and distends the gallbladder lumen. The symptoms are pretty nonspecific again and include fever, chills, rigors, and right upper quadrant pain. Hemorrhagic cholecystitis, as the name suggests, is uh, uh, suggested by hemorrhage within the gallbladder, again in the presence of an inflamed gallbladder. Patients present with acute onset of biliary colic, jaundice, melina, and hematemesis. Mirizi syndrome is uh, an interesting uh, condition in which there is an impacted gallstone in the gallbladder neck or the cystic duct which therefore causes biliary tree obstruction by edema and therefore cholestasis. Here are two ultrasound images uh, which demonstrate a stone within the gallbladder neck which uh, was non-mobile and was impacted. However, the gallbladder right now here does not appear very inflamed, but such impacted gallstones can also give rise to right upper quadrant pain and may potentially give rise to Mirizi syndrome. Moving on to the next case, this is an 85-year-old male who presented with wake right abdominal pain and uh, came to ultrasound for evaluation of the gallbladder. So the three ultrasound images demonstrate the gallbladder with another fluid collection uh, adjacent to the gallbladder fundus. And uh, 
if you look closely in the, in the third image, there appears to be a communication with this fluid collection with the gallbladder lumen with no evidence of flow here. So what is it? Is it a Phrygian cap? Is it an abscess? Or is it just a cites? What really helps us is this cine clip, which can demonstrate the communication of the fluid pocket with the gallbladder lumen. So as you can see, there is a communication between this fluid pocket and the gallbladder lumen with some sludge within the gallbladder lumen, hence suggesting a diagnosis of gallbladder perforation. This further stresses the importance of doing a cine loop and demonstrating where that fluid pocket is arising from. Gallbladder perforation usually results in the, pres in the formation of abscesses around the gallbladder, as you can see in this case. This is a part of the liver, a lot of fluid as a result of the perforation and a very heterogeneous fluid collection near the gallbladder, suggestive of an abscess. Here is yet another case uh, with a sonographic image of an inflamed gallbladder, very thickened gallbladder wall, sludge within the gallbladder, surrounding fluid, and the CT images clinch the diagnosis, which shows a break in the gallbladder wall, suggestive of a gallbladder perforation. So the gall perforated gallbladder usually results uh, in presence of cholecystitis, uh, most commonly emphysematous or gangrenous cholecystitis. It may be a result of trauma or also iatrogenic. Clinical presentation is usually very unique in such patients because the patients uh, get a temporary relief of acute abdominal pain uh, when the gallbladder perforates, which if therefore left untreated leads to peritonitis. Hence, it's very important for the clinicians to identify this series of symptoms with Right, acute onset right upper quadrant pain with temporary relief and the supportive ultrasound findings. The site of rupture most commonly is the fundus or the neck in case of an impacted uh, stone and cholecystectomy is almost always performed to salvage. There are three types of gallbladder perforation. Type 1 perforation uh, refers to free spillage of gallbladder intraluminal contents into the peritoneal cavity. Type 2 perforation is a more subacute process which is contained by an adjacent abscess. Type 3 perforation is a chronic process with the formation of a cholecystoentric fistula. The ultrasound findings and the CT findings uh, I just talked about. The ultrasound findings uh, is m the most specific findings are that of a disruption of the gallbladder wall along with a complex echogenic pericholecystic fluid collection in presence of an inflamed gallbladder. The CT findings are also pretty much the same as seen in ultrasound with presence of a gallbladder perforation or a break in the gallbladder wall continuity, pericholecystic fluid collection, gallbladder collapse, and high attenuation intraluminal density secondary to hemorrhage. These two images are just to demonstrate uh, a comparison with uh, what gallbladder perforation is most often mistaken with, and that is the Phrygian cap. This is just a cartoon picture of the Phrygian cap of the uh, from where the, ter the term originates, and this is the normal uh, variant of the gallbladder or the Phrygian cap where the fundus folds on itself um, like the cap as seen in this scouted picture. Here is another example of a gallbladder perforation in presence of acute cholecystitis, as you can tell, with the thickened gallbladder, gallbladder sludge, and gallstones. However, this is an atypical site of gallbladder rupture not in the gallbladder fundus, which appears intact in this image, and uh, the rupture appears to be somewhere in the body posteriorly with a very contained leak. Yet another example of gallbladder perforation, which was initially uh, not suspected on ultrasound, uh, probably because of a difficult scan, um, but the findings are somewhat suggestive in retrospect when you look at the gallbladder with an irregular gallbladder wall a lot of sludge within the gallbladder lumen, and some fluid pockets around the gallbladder. A CT was therefore performed and demonstrated an inflamed gallbladder with an obstructing stone in the gallbladder neck and a huge loculated fluid collection or an abscess which had resulted from gallbladder perforation. This is again the movie of the same case that I just showed you, which demonstrates better the fluid collection surrounding the gallbladder and the inflamed gallbladder with irregular gallbladder wall and sludge within the lumen. 
Another example of gallbladder perforation, the first image demonstrates a very inflamed gallbladder, irregular gallbladder wall, gallstones, sludge. And this fluid collection was actually within the left hepatic lobe and had, uh, was therefore diagnosed as a liver abscess as a result of a ruptured gallbladder, which was again better demonstrated on a CT, as you can see here. So this is this large fluid collection within the left hepatic lobe, which corresponds to the second ultrasound image here. And here is the inflamed gallbladder with some gallstones, gallbladder wall thickening, and continuity or a break in the gallbladder wall and continuity with the large liver abscess. Moving on to the next case, uh, this is a 45-year-old male with right upper quadrant pain and fever. And these are two images from the right upper quadrant, uh, two images of the liver, which demonstrate a very heterogeneous appearance of the liver and multiple echogenic foci with reverberation artifact. Another image from the same patient which demonstrates the heterogeneous fluid collection, very irregular shaggy walls and some echogenic foci and reverberation artifact. This finding itself on ultrasound should raise suspicion of presence of air within the liver and hence the presence of liver abscess. CT always is very sensitive in making this diagnosis as was in this case which demonstrates a fluid collection in the right hepatic lobe with multiple foci of air and this was diagnostic of a liver abscess. Another example of liver abscess on uh, ultrasound images uh, which demonstrates a lot of echogenic foci within the liver, um, almost occupying the entire right hepatic lobe with a lot of reverberation artifact, thus making the diagnosis easy of a liver abscess. So liver abscesses are usually pyogenic abscesses, which are usually polymicrobial. They account for 80% of hepatic abscesses cases in the United States. Amoebic abscesses are relatively rare, rare uh, caused by entamoeba histolytica. Uh, accounting for about 10% of cases. Fungal abscesses are also another 10%, mainly caused by candida. Other rare causes of liver abscesses are that of hydatid and cystosomiasis. Another cause of right upper quadrant pain also related to the biliary tract is a bile duct stone, as you can see here very clearly in the sonographic picture, which demonstrates an enlarged or dilated common bile duct and an echogenic focus within the distal common bile duct with a posterior acoustic shadowing suggesting the presence of stone. You can partially see the gallbladder over here as well and it demonstrates a very normal appearance without evidence of any gallbladder wall thickening or gallstones. The CT picture also demonstrates very clearly the presence of stone within the common bile duct as you can see here. So the diagnosis here was colidocolithiasis which is also another common cause of right upper quadrant pain. Another example of colidocolithiasis, as you can see on this ultrasound picture, which demonstrates a dilated common bile duct with multiple echogenic areas within the bile duct, which, uh, which represents sludge and gallstones. This finding was confirmed on ERCP, where you can see a dilated common bile duct and multiple filling defects, which represent gallstones as seen on ultrasound. The patient also underwent a CT, which demonstrates a very inflamed gallbladder, some gallstones, and there were some common bile duct stones, which are not very well seen on these two images. Moving on to the next case, this is a 54-year-old male uh, who was post-liver transplant, uh, and the ultrasound picture of the um, left lobe of the liver demonstrates a fluid collection within the left hepatic lobe. However, it was unclear based on this image and therefore the CT was performed, which demonstrates multiple dilated tubular fluid-filled areas within the liver, mainly in the left hepatic lobe. Again, here the diagnosis would be uh, easy if you look at the cine loop image of the left hepatic lobe, which demonstrates this fluid collection. But this is not just one fluid collection. These are actually tubular fluid-filled ducts which actually represent the bile ducts within the liver, as was better seen on CT. The diagnosis, therefore, was that of a biliary necrosis. Patient also had hepatic artery thrombosis, which further corroborated to the diagnosis. 
So biliary necrosis uh, represents destruction of the bile ducts with formation of biliary lakes or bilomas and always, almost always has concomitant arterial thrombosis. Just some rare causes, non-biliary non and non-hepatic causes of right upper quadrant pain include uh, that of perforated uh, duodenal ulcers and some renal causes. Here is one such example which in retrospect uh, was uh, diagnosed on ultrasound. However, the CT helped us in actually making the diagnosis. So if you look at these two ultrasound images of the right upper quadrant which demonstrate the liver, you, you would notice that there is uh, an extra amount of air which you more than that you would normally see in a patient. However, when the patient underwent CT, this uh, suspicion was confirmed as there were extra luminal foci of air in the right upper quadrant as you can see here and the patient was taken to surgery and was confirmed to have a perforated duodenal ulcer. Another um, right upper quadrant uh, pain cause is that of a renal abscess or pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis usually can be a difficult diagnosis on ultrasound. However, when it forms a renal abscess, it's usually better seen on ultrasound, as you can see here in this ultrasound image, uh, seen as a focal uh, hypoechoic area within the renal parenchyma with increased peripheral vascularity. And the last case for the day is uh, that of a 45-year-old female who presented with abdominal pain increasing bilirubin levels. And the first image here itself will uh, clinch the diagnosis. As you can see, the IVC and an echogenic uh, material within the IVC, which actually represents thrombus. Uh, the other pictures demonstrate the right hepatic and the middle hepatic vein, although the left hepatic vein was not seen. Also seen is uh, an area of aliasing or a mosaic artifact, uh, which corresponds to the presence of thrombus within the IVC. The diagnosis, therefore, was, was forwarded off of butt chiari syndrome, which actually is hepatic vein outflow obstruction, which can originate anywhere within the hepatic or cable systems or even the right atrium. It results in increased hepatic sinusoidal pr pressure, portal hypertension, and hepatic congestion. Uh, it results in progressive centrilobular necrosis, nodular regenerative hyperplasia, and cirrhosis and fulminant hepatic failure. The patients usually present with abdominal pain, hepatomegaly, and ascites, and need uh, uh, in emergent tips to relieve the pressure. Just to finish the talk, I would like to talk. I would like to uh, reiterate the call, the sonographic evaluation technique as given by the AIUM, which requires fasting for eight hours before the examination for adequate distension of a normally functioning gallbladder. Uh, a long axis and transverse view must always be obtained in the supine position. Uh, also, if necessary, a left lateral decubitus, erect and prone position, uh, particularly when gallstones or sludge is observed. If the patient presents with pain, tenderness to transducer compression or the sonographic Murphy sign must also be elicited. Thank you.